G'day folks, it's Cortezarino. Love is in the air. So I haven't done much building since uh, since last episode, guys. But my villagers have done a ton of breeding. So I thought I might start by giving you a bit of an update on all the good things that are happening and uh, and all the uh, all the bad things that are happening. But let's start with the good. There's my little chest for potatoes. Look at that. <laughs> These things are going nuts. I've just got one villager up above in a little farm and they are producing. And I've actually built it very differently to, uh, to my tutorials. So let's go and show you what I've done. Let's just sleep first. And we've got nasty guys coming to pay us a visit. You know, I'm trying something different with my weapons this season. See, usually I've got my sword with with uh, sharpness 5, and I just use that. But this season, I'm going to try... Well, I haven't got sharpness on it yet, but I'm going to try having sharpness on the axe and smite on the sword. So depending on which mob I'm fighting, I can pick my best weapon. So I have to get used to, if a creeper comes along, quickly switching to the axe, but the sword is absolutely killing it against the undead. And um, see, I usually have a smite 5 sword and I break it out for a, a wither fight, but that's it. So this will be handy, I think, because the only time I'm going to want looting is uh, when I'm fighting wither skeletons anyway. So I don't really need looting on the axe. So I'm, anyway, that's what I am trying. So let's go upstairs. I'll just replace that so the mobs don't climb up. And uh, let's get up to my little villager farm up there. So if you've seen my tutorials for the simple automatic carrot and potato farm and then the bigger version, you know, the layout of those farms is just one design that I came up with for the tutorial. You don't actually need to do that sort of design. It's all about the light levels on the two pieces of tilled earth where the guy's walking back and forth. So you can do any sort of layout you want. See, this one's completely different, and I've just got lights positioned in the roof and on the wall over there to give me the right light level above where he's farming there so the crops will pop out of the ground. So I just wanted to point that out in case you thought you had to do it in that design. Uh, but the, also the thing is, let's get back up there. I shouldn't have jumped down. In my simple version, the very first version I did, the two pieces of tilled earth right up the back there where uh, I've got the hopper minecarts underneath, I had them surrounded by walls. So pretty much all the uh, all the crops just dropped straight down onto the tilled earth. And it was more a matter of trying to pick them up before the villager picked them up. So that's why I used hopper minecarts, because it could grab them while they were still flying through the air. But if you do a design like I've got here, where it's all open spaces, when they pop out of the ground, they rarely land on the tilled earth. More often they're landing on the pressure plates. So hopper minecarts aren't really a good idea. You'll miss most of the crops. So I've only got hoppers on this one. So directly beneath the pressure plates, you can't see them, but I've got another hopper there with the pressure plate on top. So if the crop lands on the pressure plate, it'll get collected. And then underneath the tilled earth, I've just got a hopper because tilled earth is not a full block and it can still uh, still collect the crops through that. So if you're, if you're doing a different sort of design, don't even worry about the hopper minecarts. Just use hoppers and put them underneath the pressure plates. So another good thing about this design for a trading hall. See, I've always done trading halls where you've got a little interview system where you check out the guy before you put him into into the trading hall. Now, I got really sick of that because it's so slow. Even if you've got another one coming in really quickly, you've still got to check them out. And you just, I find I'm sitting there forever interviewing people. Uh, but with this design, you can just walk into the room. Oh yeah, I've got a whole bunch of new babies. No, don't want you. And you can just quickly run around and decapitate any guys you don't want. So the interview process is really sped up. So let's go to the bad things and let's quickly jump down here. Oh, it's not so bad at the moment, but I found all my villagers were tending to congregate over on this side and they, they don't like this side for some reason. So it's it's getting hard to refill the boats up there. 
So I'm not really sure what's going on. I'll watch it for a bit longer. At the moment it looks looks pretty good, but I might have to have a little zombie I can introduce on one side to scare them, scare them away, but yeah, at the moment it's not too bad. Ooh, and if you've, uh, not many people have followed my tutorial for this design of trading hall yet, but there's something I better show you, because I've had a few questions about it. So I've just broken a bit of stuff here so I can get in. So the idea is the villagers will walk onto a bit of carpet there and it pushes their heads up high enough to get into the boat. And that's the way I explain it in my tutorial, but it's a little bit more complex than that. So I might jump down here again and we will bust away in. See, once they walk up onto the carpet, it does make them high enough to get into the boat but it also makes them too tall to get past this bit of glass panes. So they're only going to come up onto the carpet a little bit before their head hits that. Now, if the boat is positioned too, too far toward the front there, they're not going to be able to reach it. So a lot of people are saying, hey, it's not working. My guy walks onto the carpet and, and, and he's not going in the boat. Well, the thing is, you've got to have your boat right up against the back of this glass pane. So basically, they get just up enough onto the carpet and they can get sucked in. But have it too far, too far to this side, and they will suffocate in that block. So when you first place your boat, you want to have it as far to this side as you can. And then you put your dirt blocks in. Then what you do is you jump into the boat and you steer it toward that piece of earth and you're not going to suffocate there like you're the uh, the barrier it's not going to let you go too far that your dudes are going to suffocate so that's the way to do it you uh, you got to get in the boat and steer it toward the back for this thing to work properly and the last bad thing that I've noticed see I wanted to use villager trading to uh, get all my experience points because I found last season I wouldn't even bother going to the Enderman farm because it was so far away. By the time I got there, I could have just gone to my farmer trading place and uh, traded a bunch of pumpkins and repaired any tool I wanted. Now, that was fine when I had tons and tons of resources. At the moment, I've got carrots and potatoes, but that is it. And a big problem I'm finding now is I've got tons of librarians, but I haven't got enough sugarcane to unlock their trades. It's taking forever. So I need to get to work on a sugarcane farm. So I've got a temporary design set up out in the open that looks like this. So the observer block will pick up the sugarcane growing and it powers this block. And this block does two things. It powers the rail below and it bud powers this piston. So when a piston's bud powered, it's just going to sit there until you give it an update. So the, uh, the powered rail gives it an update, then everything becomes unpowered and the piston retracts again. It's really good because it's got no redstone and it's uh, it's very lag friendly. Except for look at all this sugarcane flying everywhere and little bits of items just sitting around everywhere causes lag and I intend to be doing a very technical base. So if I can, I want to keep lag to a minimum. So I was experimenting around with a few things and I noticed it's a uh, if you have a design like this that lets it grow to three tall and then pushes out in the middle one, it's pretty much always the uh, the top piece of sugar cane that ends up landing on the ground here. And most of the time, this middle one will go in the water. So I was experimenting with just not letting that, uh, that top one grow, just letting it being a, a too tall piece of sugar cane. And that's not too bad. You get less items lying around. And then I experimented with having the water a little bit higher because the sugar cane will hold the water back. And if a, a seed like this sugar cane right here, it's caught right on the edge. It's not falling into the water. By having the water just one block higher, the water would pick up that one and send it on its way. So I think I'm going to go for something like this, like only letting them grow too tall. So I thought of this design here that uh, the observer block blocks it off from growing any taller. So, boom, there we go. Only problem with that, that's a sticky piston and I don't have any slime blocks. So, that sucks. So, I'm considering doing the most basic of designs. One that I've done plenty of times before, uh, but this time, just with the two changes of only letting the sugar cane grow to too tall and raising this water level up by one, all I'm going to do 
to have a line of pistons facing the sugar cane and then just have it on a timer and power them every now and then. And it should be a lot simpler to build and hopefully a lot less laggy and, uh, and not getting drops just sitting around everywhere. So what I might do now, guys, is uh, start throwing some blocks together and see if we can get this sugarcane farm up and running. And I think this is going to be where I'm going to build it. Maybe right here or maybe on, uh, on top of the Iron Golem farm. I'm not sure yet, but uh, we'll check back in in a little bit and uh, you'll see what I decided to do. Okay, so this is very cool. I finally got my first double chest worth of carrots stacked up behind this double chest. So you see that redstone lamp's on. That means I've got at least two double chests worth. That's very, very cool. And I've started to get the sugar cane coming in. Now it's coming in a little bit slow. A little bit slower than what I would like right now when I'm using all this paper to unlock the trades of these librarians. But I know from experience that uh, once I get pretty much all the librarians I want, I'm not going to use sugarcane that much at all. Like I'll use the paper for, for making firework rockets later on, but... You know, I don't want to go too crazy on a massive, massive sugarcane farm just for it to be a, a lag-inducing thing later on when I don't need that much of it. So I might just, uh, I might just chill out a little bit and not go too big on the sugarcane farm. But that's what I've done so far, and I'm pretty sure I've overdone the glass. It's, it's a bit painful to look at. Uh, but all the drops just flow down this ice stream and go up a little elevator and into my little chest contraption. And we might have a look at that. So this is the contraption I came up with to indicate that I have another full double chest worth of carrots behind this one here. Now I've done it just by having a comparator reading off these hoppers and that will light up as soon as I have one carrot in here. So that, that, you're thinking, doesn't indicate a full double chest, but uh, before that one, all the drops are going to go into this double chest. So by the time I get a single carrot in this chest here, I've already got a, an extra full double chest there, and that's what it's reading. So it's, uh, look, it's, it's nothing special. I've overdone the, uh, the use of the hoppers probably, but it's getting the result that I want. Now for the sugarcane farm. What design did I use in the end? Well, I used none of the designs that I showed you before in the creative world. Now, the reason I didn't use any of those designs is because I, I quickly realized that I didn't have a lot of space inside the tower for a massive sugarcane farm. So it was only going to be a small one. And then I figured, well, a small one's all I'm probably going to need anyway. So I was really overthinking the lag. Like, in a small farm like this, I'm not going to have that many drops just sitting around causing lag. It's it's going to be so minimal. Minimal. I, I was completely overthinking it. So then I was going to go for the powered rail design. And then I quickly realized I don't have any gold. So we're just using redstone. So this is super, super basic. As soon as one of the sugar crane grows up to... Do I have any on me? Oh, I wonder if I can nick some from there. Give me a moment. No, I'm not going to be able to get it. Um, I'm going to go get some. Okay, so as soon as one of the sugar cane grows to three tall, the observer block will pick it up and it'll light up all the dust along here and push out all the pistons. So uh, the good thing is the majority of the, uh, of the sugar cane is only going to grow to two tall anyway. So... Still got a few drops lying around, like there's one, but like I said, this farm is so small, it's not going to produce that much lag, and having all the pistons fire and all the dust there is laggier than the uh, than the powered rail design, but um, yeah, small farm, it shouldn't be much of a big deal, and once I get gold later on, like there is a gold farm in the works, someone's building it, um... I, I think they're having problems getting through the roof of the nether until we fight the dragon, get the dragon egg, and break some bedrock. It could be a little bit dangerous to go up to the uh, the gold farm at the moment, so I'll leave it like this, and much later on when I've got plenty of gold, I may come back 
and changed the design to the powered rail design. But um, yeah, I've been thinking like so many times I'm making design choices here because I haven't got the materials I need. So someone else is taking care of the gold with the, with the gold farm they're building, but the slime, I know a few people have got plans for it, but I don't know if anyone started. And I know that I could throw together a slime farm very quickly, just a small one, enough, enough to get me and a few other people the drops we need. So I think I'm going to do that. But before I do that, I'm going to need something else. And what is that something else you speak of, Cortez? Well, this is what that is. And I've got two. So we need to get one more. I am not digging out a slime chunk with, uh, without a beacon. So that's what I'm going to go do now. Okay, so I don't know what the drop rate is for Wither Skulls and Skulls. But look at this. I've only killed 27 of them. And I've got my third skull. And ooh, check this out. Check this out. Very cool. I've got my first magma cube head. So guys, it is time for some wither killing. I don't have any soul sand yet, but that shouldn't take me too long to rustle up. Then I'm going to find myself a deserted part of the server, probably out at the mining desert. And I may fight this wither underground, dig a hole, fight him there. It'll be a bit easier. So me and backup are going to run out there and take out the wither. Hang on a minute. Where's backup? <laughs> 